I bring you greetings from Naples, Florida. This is Craig Goodrich, senior pastor of the First Presbyterian Church of Naples, and it's Friday, October 7. The Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12 writes these words, these exhortations to the church in Rome. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Practice hospitality. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Friends, this is our call as followers of Jesus Christ, to care for one another and extend the love of God here in Naples and beyond. Nine days ago, Hurricane Ian roared into Naples and southwest Florida with high winds and storm surge causing destruction throughout and suffering and death a little further north from us. Remarkably, the church structure did just fine. There was no water intrusion, even though we're five blocks from the Gulf. The power stayed on throughout, and the only damage was uh, this window, which came off as hinges in the pastor's office. Uh, someone, I guess, probably didn't close it all the way correctly. Others in our neighborhood, families in our church, members, were not so fortunate as the church. Our deacons have been making calls to all members. Maybe you've gotten a call. And we estimate, a rough estimate is maybe 20 to, to 30 have suffered some kind of flooding damage. Maybe they've lost a car or their house or high rise has been, become inhabitable because of the storm surge. Want you to know your session. Your elders have taken several actions in response to Hurricane Ian. The first was to establish a Hurricane Ian relief fund modeled after our coronavirus fund to receive donations from you to, uh, for the session to recommend or session to decide on recommendation from the Mission Council, uh, local agencies or agencies to which uh, these funds would go to, to provide relief. However, closer to home, there is an existing fund, the Pastors Emergency Assistance Fund, and we're encouraging donations to that fund as well because this goes to support individuals who've suffered damage. It's all confidential, uh, but financial assistance to individuals who are connected to our congregation. Uh, last Sunday, we did worship. We had regular worship, about 125 in attendance. Rex gave a great sermon. If you haven't watched it, please go online and watch. Afterwards, we had a town hall, an informal town hall, about 70 of us. We just passed the mic around. We shared stories. We shared concerns. We prayed. It was a wonderful time of compassion and caring. During this past week, uh, work crews, several work crews, again, Rex, thanks to Rex for establishing these, have gone to at least two of our homes of families and done cleanup work there. We've made offers to others who've declined. Uh, meals are also a possibility of being provided. We are caring for each other. Of course, we're aware that uh, there are churches in our area who have suffered uh, Trinity by the Cove, Episcopal Church in Port Royal, St. John's Episcopal Church in, in Park Shore suffered flooding. There may be others. Uh, we're also aware of Presbyterian churches further north in Cape Coral and Sanibel, uh, Northport, Fort Myers Beach, uh, extensive damage and suffering, and you'll hear more about that. To conclude this morning um, with a story in the scriptures in Mark chapter 2, Jesus is uh, healing in Capernaum. The word gets out, and uh, a paralytic, a paralyzed man is brought by four friends uh, on a mat to Jesus for healing. Uh, but you may remember from Sunday school, they can't, they can't get in the house. There's so many people gathered around, so they go up on, onto the roof, the thatched roof, and they, they tear the roof off, and they let the paralytic down on ropes in front of Jesus, who who sees their faith, and he forgives the man his sins and, and um, heals him. 
And the paralyzed man, no longer paralyzed, takes up his mat and walks home. I think that's a great story, a great metaphor, a great example of what the church, what we are called to be in this time of trauma and crisis. We are recovering. We will recover. But let us carry each other, carry others, carry our neighbors to Jesus for healing, extending the love and compassion and justice of God in this town and beyond. If you are aware of any needs, please do let us know. Tell us how you're doing. Do continue in prayer for the city of Naples, all who have suffered damage. And I wish you this day and always blessing and peace. Amen.